actually just a few more now. Um, roughly. Where, where do you live, by the way? I live here in Cape. Where? Leverett Street. Okay. Um, after, you pretty close to the defendant, or know him pretty well? I've known the defendant for some time. Uh, that's a little relative, so a couple of years, or? A few years. So you had a, a substantial amount of contact with him after he got out of jail this last time, is that right? Uh, sure, I, I see him often. And can, can you give a rough, rough estimate of how many times you've seen him smoke marijuana? Uh, since he got out. I'm sorry, if I could get more correctly, I don't know if he means, if Mr. Webb means uh, two weeks ago, if he means uh, most of a year ago. After he got out of jail in December 2013, to today, roughly how many times you see him smoke marijuana? I won't hold you to an exact number, of course. Yeah, I don't know if you can put a number on that because, uh, you know, Mr. Paul is a civil disobedience activist, so there's many times that there'll be gatherings in the square and people will be consuming either cannabis or tobacco or, you know, different products. And I, I, I don't really make a point to ask what people are actually consuming. All right, but um, let's limit it just to those times where you know he was smoking marijuana because you, I assume you can recognize marijuana when you smell it. Um, I would be able to, sure. Let's limit it to those number of times when you actually knew he was smoking marijuana because you could smell it. Roughly, how many times did the defendant smoke marijuana between when he got out and today? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know if I can put a number on it. It was an estimate. Ballpark. Range. I don't know. Uh, well, I, I guess maybe like when he first got out, it was uh, more frequent. I haven't really seen it recently. I know since he's been, uh, you know, taken in for the probation violation, I don't believe I've seen it since then. Well, right, since he, so he's only been out in a very short time, a couple of weeks. I'm not talking about those two weeks. We can set those aside. Just from when he got out in December 2013 till when he went in on the VOP in June of 2014, you saw him smoke marijuana a lot, yes? Well, a lot sounds like a, a relative term. Um, which is why I asked for a range. So if you can give us a range, that'd be great. Um, I imagine that the defendant is a daily user. I believe he's open that good. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. No more. Thank you. You may sit down. Did you want to mark? I, I would. If you could give us a disc, Mr. Green. Mr. Green, if you would just remove the disc and, and uh, give it to me to make help. I, it is not going to I would ask that it be marked in uh, if it is the defendant's exhibit A. Absolutely. Uh, defendant's exhibit A is the full exhibit. Any additional witnesses? If I could have one more. Absolutely. say for the record that, that had the clerk's office confer with counsel, we, we originally set this for, for the morning, recognizing that it was going to take, take a fair amount of time. At, at the, uh, after the clerk's office conferred with counsel, we moved it to the afternoon, thinking that there would be an adequate, adequate time. I want to make sure that, that attorney, uh, attorney Hill has sufficient time to confer with Mr. Paul, but, um, but we, would have, we could have started this earlier if I had known that it was going to take this long. Your, your Honor, I, I think that it's a short <coughs> conversation with Mr. Paul and I to have. I see it's 3 o'clock. Uh, the question is, is whether he will pass the box. I understand. Uh, it's a consequential decision. I'm going to give you a few minutes to talk to him about that. And just so, of course, we're out. I still think we're going to be able to make this okay. Okay. We'll take a short Thank you. All right.
happens, thank you.